Hello everyone, this is Ken Quigley from Keystroke and this is the latest webinar in, in our Linktivity Resellers training series. So uh, this week, as you can tell from the screen, we're going to be covering Link to Events. Before we get started though, just want to cover a few housekeeping issues. Uh, I'm going to ask that everyone turn off their mics. I'm looking at the screen. Seems that everyone has. Um, please note how to add a question to the chat. Vic will be monitoring the questions and will interrupt me if he thinks that, um, that we should pause. Okay, this event is being recorded and we'll email out on Monday um, the, <coughs> excuse me, the link to the recording as well as adding it to various social media forms. Um, we Scheduled this on Black Friday. Uh, I had a few people ask me, why did we do that? Is because this is a weekly training series and we are wrapping up next Friday with Link to Calendar and we needed to complete the training series by the December 5th launch, which is literally the next Tuesday after, uh, after next week's training. So unfortunately we didn't have the chance to really bump this one, but I uh, appreciate you guys for joining us. Um, for just a bit of edi edification, Link to Events was actually the second product we developed for Linktivity and included um, in the bundling offered by ACT. Okay, so I've included a couple of, um, of events or a couple of useful resources. We've got blogs in the product page. The events uh, page I'll show you in a minute when we go to the um, uh, Linktivity. Uh, there's also a link to the benefits of using event management software. So this is in the Linktivity blog. Certainly useful for resellers to go through and kind of understanding the use case, even though we will be covering that. And then the Linktivity user manual, which I'll get to uh, during uh, once we visit the page. Okay, so what does Link to Events do? So on a very general level, Link to Events helps ACT users organize online events with less time and cost while optimizing. I think we got someone that joined us here. Okay, hold on. Hold on. Okay, back to that page. Sorry, I went to mute someone and click the wrong button. Okay, so on a general level, Link to Events helps uh, ACT users organize online events with less time and cost while optimizing the turnout and return on investment for that event. We all know that hosting uh, online events is a great way to promote products and services and generally educates uh, prospects and, and customers. Now, the objective of Links to Events is to leverage the data that's already in ACT for promoting the event. And then from a lead gen perspective, um, be where all those uh, leads that you generate from this event um, will flow back into. Okay, in simplest terms, Link to Events does the following, and we're going to demonstrate all this. It creates and publishes a sign up page. Okay, and actually, you can see on the screen the sample of the sign up page that you guys all registered with. Okay, it processes all sign ups for the event, updates existing contacts in ACT, and adds new ones. Okay, all the sign ups are linked to the activity, I will show you one exception, and then organized in a group for really easy follow-up. And then reminders and follow-ups are also sent out to maximize your turnout. And as I said, we're gonna go through all of that. As most of you know, we use Link to Events internally because everyone in attendance um, here signed up using this page that I've already displayed, okay? And while we're going uh, to get into the, the you know, the demo of setting up linked events. I want to explain the hidden superpower of link to events, which is not um, known by many people. Okay, so let me go to the next slide. Okay, so when we use, um, when we host a webinar, okay, there's two types of services that you can use. And it doesn't matter if you're using Zoom or Adobe or Citrix. Um, we use Citrix, we use uh, GoToMeeting. But let's kind of focus on what the difference between a meeting service and a webinar service. So a meeting service does not have sign-up pages, okay? That's the first thing. 
involves inviting guests directly with a join link. So let's say if I wanted Vic to attend, I'm going to send him a join link. He doesn't have to accept, he doesn't have to sign up. He is being distributed all the information he needs, okay? There's no RSVP process, so organizers have no idea how many people will be attending, making it very difficult to plan. So think about it. If I just sprayed out an email and said, here's the join link, for today's event, I really have no idea. And from a, a lead gen perspective, it's also quite useless, okay? And there's no automated reminders or follow-ups. So that's the meeting service. The webinar service, now, as, as I said, there's doesn't matter which service you use, Zoom, Citrix, or Adobe, they, they always offer these two tiers of service. The webinar service costs about five to times much as the meeting service, provides a sign-up page, only provides a join link to those that sign up. So that's really important, right? Because you want people to actually go through the sign up process before you share that join link. And it tallies a list of all that signed up and sends out automated reminders and follow ups. Okay. Now, the key thing is that neither add new contacts to act or update existing contact. Neither organizes all the signups in a group or links them to an activity, and neither changes the history of the contacts participating in that event. So it doesn't matter which one you spend, okay? And let's just kind of review the cost difference. Okay, so a meeting service, what we subscribe to, we subscribe to the business class, so it's around $22 a month, and you can get about 250 uh, participants. I think normally it costs is around 26, okay? And then you can get a lower tier for as little as, you know, $16, $19, okay? Now that's the meeting service. The webinar service, on the other hand, is like 129, 159, and then as high as 239 to 309. Now you can see that there is a, a higher number of participants, but I've never had an event that's required 500. Okay, we've had several that have gone into, you know, 200, 300, that kind of thing. But generally, it has been sufficient. The meeting service has been sufficient, um, you know, to at least host uh, the largest quantity we've had. Okay. So that's the big difference. Now, the, here is the key while neither one of those services integrate with ACT, if you use the cheaper service, the one that's around $20, and then you use link to events, that will cost you between $15 and $20, what, depending on whether or not you use the standard or the team feature, okay? You're spending anywhere from $35 to $40 and getting $150 to $300 worth of service because it basically bridges the gap between those two services. So it it will take a meeting service and it will create the, the sign-up page. It will, um, you know, process all the, the sign-ups, add them into ACT, it will send out the, the join link. You will get a running tally, and I'll show you that in a bit, of everyone that's signed up, and it will automate the follow-ups. Now, the big difference is, not only are you saving well over $100, even when you combine the cost of a meeting service with link to events, okay? But now you've got everything organized in ACT for your future follow-ups, okay? So with that, let's go to linktivity.net. Okay, I'm gonna click here. Let me just move some things around on my screen here. Okay, so here is the homepage. Now I did talk to you guys about uh, some of the resources. So you click here, you can go down to events and you can read up more on here. Okay, now some of the other uh, resources that you've got is, the um, the user manuals. So if you click on here, you can actually see here on link to events, the introduction, the setup guide, and keep in mind, this is a, um, a webinar for resellers. So I want you guys to be familiar with, you know, the setup resources available, okay? Okay, and then in the blog, we've got, um, just to kind of show you, we've got the benefits of using event management software. And it kind of goes through all the different 
um, uh, advantages and use cases for it. Okay. So now let's go to the demo. So we've pretty much covered everything that we need to know to understand how the product, uh, you know, where to get the information. By the way, uh, we do have an updates page here. And what we're going to do is we're going to add, we've, we've basically sorted all of the product updates by dates, but we're actually going to add a filter for products. So you can actually see all the, um, the individual updates for each product. So if you're using one and not another, you, ne you won't necessarily want to filter through all of them. Okay, and just learn about the ones that you've subscribed to. Okay, so here's link to events. When I click on the link to events, I get all my events here. Now, I wanna just kind of briefly go through what this dashboard shows. So you, you've got, as you can see in many of our features, uh, many of our list views, there is the action buttons. Okay, so this one is view event. This one is copy the URL. Okay, for the the sign up page, and this one is edit. You can see here, view submissions and duplicate events. So if you're actually there's two ways of creating a new event that's based on an old event. This one is the duplicate, and then delete. Let's say it's something that gets canceled. Okay, but if I was to go down to here, I can actually see the link to events webinar that we've got. I can see that I've got 25 people signed up for it. But if I went here and I clicked on view submissions, I can immediately see everyone that's signed up. Okay. And we're going to add a column for the web code so that if people call up for bigger attended events, you can actually search by web code. Okay. But what I wanted to do is I wanted to show you here where this one says 221. Most of them we will get, um, you know, under a hundred because a lot of the times these are educational events, but, this one was relating to a fairly big launch we did earlier in the year on handheld contact. So we had a really, really good response. 221, now why am I focusing on that? Because there is an actual act limit for how many contacts can be linked to an activity. Remember, you've got the ability to add people to a group that sign up and also link them to an activity. However, if it goes, and I believe the number is 150, if it goes above 150, then it will actually stop processing any further registrations. So be mindful, and I'm going to go through the, the new event process, and you can see where you can deselect that. If you think it's going to be over 150, definitely make sure that that option to link everyone to the activity is not enabled. Okay? Um, you can obviously see the date, the time, the um, fees. I'll get into that. See the organizers in the submission list. Up here, you've got drip emails where you can actually create drip emails in the team edition to follow up and you can create like a whole cascading of, of uh, drip emails relating to building up and following after the event. Okay, here's another place where the submissions are recorded and you're able to view them either based on all your events or filter by events. And then here's a new feature, um, you know, images, because what we've done is we've basically said that you can um, share all the images from the image library across all the team products. This is quite a cool addition that we've added in recent weeks. Okay, uh, we'll get into demoing that. So getting back to the list, we are going to start creating a new event. So. Clearly, you just, oh, by the way, we always include contextual help We're at, on whatever your page you're on. Here's a little video we've built in. So if ever you're in a page and you've got any questions, look around for the help or question mark, and it will show you um, relevant help to that page. Okay, so now I'm going to click on new. Okay, and we're going to create a new event. Okay, now I've got two options at this point. One, I can create a brand new event. I can schedule it and that event will be pushed into ACT. Okay, so whatever I schedule here, the type, the time, the date, the duration, everything will be um, pushed into ACT instantly via the API. But I've also got the option, if I've already scheduled it, to go into this section and then select the activity. Now, one of the advantages of using the link activity, uh, link ex existing activity feature is that you may set up an event using your software for you know, the hosting the meeting. 
and it will create that out, that activity in Outlook, which you can then push into um, Act. Now, at that point, you've got all of the um, the join link information and all of the event details. And what you can do is when you click link exist, existing activity and select that, it will actually pull it into the event. So that kind of gives you de facto Citrix and Zoom integration, because what you're doing is you're basically taking the activity that Zoom or Citrix or Adobe created and importing it in. So that was a, a way for us to kind of easily create that backdoor integration without building direct integration. Okay, but I'm going to create this one from scratch and I'm going to call it the Berestegi birthday blast. Okay, and I'm just going to make something up here dub 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 dot link to dot uh, oh, forward slash work forward slash Berestegi. Okay, and Now this link is what you would get from your meeting software. Okay, so whether it's again, Citrix or Zoom, this is when you're creating the activity, this is where you'd put in the link. Now, I wanna make sure that it is on his birthday, which I believe is May 29th. And I wanna make sure that the time, uh, we'll put it at 4 p.m. Uh, let's make it at five so we can start drinking. Okay, uh, it'll be tough getting people out uh, under normal circumstances for Tony's birthday. So we'll just, you know, say only 60 minutes. Okay, and then we will say, you notice how all these custom activities, because you've made an API connection to your database, all custom activities are um, available to you um, in your database. Okay, now remember I said there's two types of ways of bringing in activities or bringing in uh, event details from a previous event. One is to duplicate, the other one is to import. So if you've had a similar type event, you don't necessarily wanna duplicate it, but you wanna import it or what's more likely the case is you've forgotten to duplicate it. And you're creating this like, well, hey, this is a pretty similar to some of the other link to reseller webinars. I'll just import this event in. In this case, that doesn't apply. So I'm gonna click on create. Now at this point, there's gonna be a small pause because it's actually writing to the database. It's at this point that it's creating the activity, it's creating the group, okay, inside of ACT, okay? And I'm getting this little notice saying the activity to this event could not be found. Um, or, so I'm going to create, yeah, let's create the activity. Okay, the activity is created. So now you'll see here, I've got this long, ugly invitation URL. I'm gonna to get to that later, okay? So see, here's the, the basic details. Now I can dress it up. I've copied some text here. Okay, and I wanna have an event photo. Okay. And one of the advantages we've got here that we've recently upgraded this MC editor here, and I can actually put in an image. And because I can, um, I can now share all the images before I can upload. Let me go upload here. And it's uploading the images to my library. I'm gonna select that. And I could set the um, the width here. I could add a description, but this is all fine. Okay. So now I've got this as part. I got this image at the top. I've added the the basic text. I've got some formatting tools. I can create the justification. Do whatever. I've got uh, bullets. You name it. But this isn't a um, something that we're going to be you know teaching how to. Um, make fancy templates or a desktop publishing uh, class. Here is where you can set up a signup fee, okay? Now, this is only available in Team, but you can actually use the Link to Events Team Edition to charge for an event, okay? And that's relevant for a lot of people, especially uh, not so much uh, from a marketing standpoint, but a lot of people will have 
uh, speaking engagements where that's how they make their living. So this is something for 15 or sorry, $20 a month that they can um, suddenly have a way of generating a revenue from sp online speaking engagements, okay? So just kind of scroll down, you can put in the footer text. Footer text is, is going to be pretty useful if um, if you're dealing with people in the UK um, and you're worried about GDPR issues, then you may want to mention in here that you know any information that's added will be added to the database, okay? And that will help keep you in compliance because GDPR is not so much about spamming people, it's about privacy, and you've got to um, make sure that people are aware of that when they're signing up. Upcoming events. Um, if you've got a regular page where you're promoting upcoming events, it's useful to be able to put it here so that people can not only sign up for this event, but they can see other events that you've got scheduled. So the document link, um, that is, if you're publishing this event, I know obviously less relevant on a birthday, but if you're publishing a um, a marketing event relating to a new product, then you may want to provide here. Here's some uh, downloaded information, and here's a link to the product page that you can learn more on. Now, this calendar link is actually a new feature because what we're trying to do is build a lot of synergy between the different Linktivity products. So what we've done is we've said here, I want this to grab, um, to post under the signup page, my personal uh, calendar link. So if people are signing up and they actually are curious about um, the event and maybe they wanna book a one-to-one -one meeting with me, or this is really, imagine being a financial planner, we're talking about retirements or things like that. They may say, you know what, this all sounds really interesting. I wanna book a meeting with you just to find out the kind of services that you offer in general. Remember the point of this is to, um, to generate leads, okay? And then here you can just put in the text. It automatically defaults. Click here to book one one to one time with the organizer, but you can type in anything you like. Okay. Now this is the the basic information, okay, that you've got for the event. So now you can click on save. Okay. And here is where we had a lot of requests for people to add custom fields, okay? So we've included all the, the contact fields here, okay? And what we've done is we've added the ability to add custom fields. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on that. Everyone on this call is pretty aware of, of how fields work, but you can click on here and add additional fields, okay? And that allows you to map the results, whichever, um, this was a customer request, so we're definitely making sure it's available, okay? Now, what kind of emails? Well, you guys all received a reminder, so I can actually set up to say, okay, two hours before the event, I'm going to you know, send out a reminder with the join link. I don't care I'm, I'm distributing the join link at this point because the audience that's receiving it has already signed up, okay? And then I can set up follow-up events, send follow-up emails X number of hours, after the event, okay? And I could put this in here, and this is where I can add in the drip emails that I showed you guys earlier, okay? And then the templates, okay? We basically use two different templates. And by the way, at any point when you're designing this, if you wanna see what it looks like, you can click on here, okay? And Obviously, I should have done a PNG here. I forgot the background was gray, but I could fix that and I'll, I'll show that in a minute. Okay, so now we've got the, the invitation, we've got the signups. You see how um, these fields here are stretched from uh, right to left? That's not particularly attractive. So I'm gonna go back to the contact fields. I'm gonna click here and I'm gonna say, okay, I don't really want it to be 100%. So I'm gonna edit it. I'm gonna say 50. Now, if I go back to the signup page, that's organized a little nicer, okay? If I want to go back and change the style, I'm gonna go with the compact style. And the main difference here is it's going to um, put most of the field labels inside the field. And it's gonna just obviously take up less space. 
there isn't going to be the same kind of borders because often when people are using the compact style, they're inserting it in a small column. So they don't want to presume or the, the presumption is that there isn't going to be uh, additional layout properties. But we're going to go back to the default and save. And then we can go to customize. OK, so there is the ability to put in a watermark image here. OK, I played around with it mostly with the surveys, not so much with the image. So I'm not sure how well that will work. Background opacity is basically what kind of, of um, half tone you can create, because obviously if it's 100 percent opacity, then you're not going to be able to read the text in front of it. Form width, form border. OK, um, all the different pro properties you want. When you see accents, typically those relate to the buttons. OK, but this is where you can. Um, let's see, background. Okay, I'm going to see, forget where this is. Okay, FFF, FFF. Okay. Okay, so now you can see how I fixed the, I had a, a, a miss color match here, and now Tony's head floats, um, you know, without looking like it's boxed. So it's a little bit more attractive now. OK, and that, as I said, isn't so much a desktop publishing tool so much as just showing you some of the controls that you've got available. OK, so again, templates, contact fields. OK, if I wanted to now when you're signing people up um, again, think about what the purpose of the event is. If you are trying to harvest new leads, then you're probably going to want maybe um, a little bit more than name and email, probably name and email and phone number. If it's to a largely by invitation, then you just want the name and the email because you've already got all of their contact information. So you don't want them, you know, having to jump through too many hoops and provide you information you've already got. Okay. And then, as I said, you can see the layout properties here. I've made both of these fields required, which they were by default. And then what you're seeing here is the email, this little star, indicates that this is how it's going to look up to see if there's an existing contact. So if there's an email match, it's going to recognize that, you know, that is an existing contact, not create it, and just update it accordingly. Okay. Vic, any questions at this point? I don't think I can see the questions, Ken, because when I tried sending one to the whole group, I couldn't get on. It wouldn't let me do it. So I think you have to okay. check the questions. Sorry. Okay. Well, that'll show it. That'll keep everyone quiet. Okay. So we we talked at the beginning about having this big ugly URL. Okay. Well, the team edition has the ability to click here. Okay, and then select anyone from the drop down here link to.fm link to.red link to.sh and then you can just type in okay that's too long okay type in here okay and be careful whenever you're creating a short url or any kind of link to not put in spaces OK, so I'm just going to put in an underscore, create short URL. And now this available, which is much more human friendly. OK, and I can sit, go here just to test it. And you can see how quickly it works. OK, we've got pretty good DNS management on this. So most of the, the URLs that you create will work instantly. OK, and as you can see, it resolves it to this. So the short URL is still a redirect to the long, ugly one that we looked at earlier. But it's really useful if you're going to be posting this in social media and you put it in Facebook or LinkedIn or some of those. Often some of these ugly uh, links here, the social media service will actually just remove. So you'll have all the promotion for the event and then the actual invite link uh, will be absent and people won't have any ability to action. OK. OK, so here we've got all the um, the event details here. And let's go back. OK, you'll notice here that down at the bottom, automatically, because I clicked on that checkbox, I can click here. And it's going to load my calendar where people can book additional um, activities. OK. OK, and now. 
they can see on Monday is the next available activity and they can book this with me, okay? So this is kind of cool. If you remember, the whole purpose of this is to generate leads. So if you've got new people signing up and they wanna get to know you better, it's nice to have that feature enabled where you can immediately engage with the customer, okay? So all of this, very, very straightforward. So what happens here? So every single person that is um, signing up for this will then either get updated in ACT, okay, and added to the group or created in ACT and added to the group. Their history will reflect that and both of them will be linked to the activity, except in the case of what I told you. Right here, add contacts to activity, not re recommended on events with more than 100 participants due to contact limit. I don't remember if, if it's exactly 100, um, but I think we may have set a lower threshold just to keep people from butting right up against it, okay? But anytime that you're 100 or over, you're gonna run the risk is remember, if you enter in someone that is a duplicate, okay, and you've got them in your database twice, it's now counted twice towards your your um, activity limit, okay? So just be careful. You may actually have like 120 people um, sign up, but the duplicates actually drive you over the top. And then when people try to register, they're gonna see a big error screen, okay? So just be mindful of that. Okay, so you'll see over here, here is the assign, con uh, assign contacts to a group. So this group has automatically be been created in ACT. And I can, if I want, click here, cancel it, and go select another group, okay? But this is, why is this useful? Well, if I am promoting an event, okay, and I've got a drip campaign in AMA set up for this, okay? And let's say there's two, three, four uh, emails that are promoting this event. I will wanna add this group as an exclusion so that the moment that anyone signs up, they will be excluded from any future emails. Because why do you want to email someone three, four times uh, additionally if they've already signed up for the event? So this is where there's really a nice synergy between uh, AMA and Linktivity, where you can set this as a um, exclusion. And we we surfaced it here, so it's really, really easy to find, okay? So that you can add this to your exclusion when you're promoting the event. Okay, so now we've pretty much got everything that we need all set up. Um, and I think this is pretty much it. So now let's kind of go through here. I just wanna cover, we've talked about creating the event. This was automatic, the activity was automatically created. Uh, we've reviewed the preview screen. Okay, and we've gone through all the different settings for um, creating a event. And that, that's pretty much it. Okay, so you've done the hard part. You can you know, obviously incorporate your AMA, but let's talk about um, some of the feature improvements. So um, in recent, I would say in the last few months, the one of the changes was adding in the, the um, uh, custom fields. People really, really were interested in that. Adding in the formatting here. Okay, so adding in a fully built out um, MC editor. Um, this is the formatting. You can actually add in a video, okay? But the video has to be um, an existing link. You can't upload a video here. But adding in, um, and then you can put in URLs here. So let's say you wanted to do, you know, just what you would think. Okay, you can set up all, any kind of hyperlinks, bullets, numbers, things like that. We really tried to make this as, um, you know, designer friendly as possible, okay? Um, let's see, the, um, go back here, okay. Link to calendar uh, banner with sign up page, which we covered, and then the shared images, which, you know, you saw me add this, this, this image now, which I'm gonna remove obviously after the event, this image now is available to everyone on my team, should we have related events. So they can add this to quotes, they can add this to events, they can add this to forms, they can add it to whatever, okay? So now let's go back to Linktivity and let's talk about some of the differences between the tiers, okay? 
Now, I'm not going to read anything for you. you guys can go through all the information here, read about this. Here's one of our product videos, okay? And we talked about the benefits of using link to events, compare standard and team, and market your, your business for less. These are blog links, okay? Here's some feature, you know, um, really kind of quick hits. And then if, as we scroll down, we've got the comparison chart. So let's take a look at it. Collect admittance fee for billable events. We showed that field where you can actually add that in. That's not available in the standard. So really for $5 more, you're able to really have a much more um, you know, commercial product that you can generate revenue from. Automatically schedule act follow-ups after registration. So every time that someone registers, you will get that activity, like a follow-up activity, scheduled in act you don't necessarily have to do that but you can enable that feature so that you can follow up with each and every single person um that books for an event now that may not be practical if it's a big event but certainly it's nice for maybe a, a smaller quainter um event to, to have that option schedule a dri additional drip campaigns i showed you that feature where you can set up you know successive emails in promoting an event or following up afterwards assign events to a different team member. So one of the things we try to establish is on the different Linktivity uh, team products is which one is a user product and which one is a team product, not team product, bad choice of words, account product, okay? Things like link to calendar and link to quotes are individual user products because every single person that is going to benefit from it has to have their own account. But things like link to forms, okay, link to events, um, uh, link to shrink, okay, and even link to surveys, you can have one per account. And then the reason we call it a team product is that I can create, say, um, let's say an event like this and then assign it to Michael Cadlib or to Victor Cron. So I'm actually doing it on their behalf, but once I set it up, I create them as the event owner, and then they will get all the emails, they will get all the confirmations, and they will get all the follow-ups. So that's why it's co considered a team. And when you select from the, um, the list of everyone, it's pulling from your user list on the team. We've made it very, very deliberately. We have not allowed, and we've had, people request this many times where can't I just add in an email for, you know, form submissions to get forwarded to or, um, you know, events or surveys or things like that. We want this to be based on users. Okay. So we've made it very, very specific that it's linked to the users. Okay. Um, shared image library we covered and then the link to shrink integration. Okay. So you can see the cost difference is 180 or $15 per month versus 240, okay? Now, we're all resellers on this call, so what, what is the standard prospect that we're uh, facing here? Well, financial planners, they make their bones on lunch and learn. So that's how they get new customers. They get um, into uh, with a particular company, they coordinate with the HR department, and they have a lunch and learn, and they, you know, expose themselves to to new prospects, okay? Mortgage brokers, um, real estate agents, anyone in professional services, anyone, even like ourselves, we use this all the time to promote uh, products, to train people on products, new product releases, updates, things like that. All of these things are, are ideal. So really think about it. People that sell products or services, which covers just about everyone, okay? They can now do this dramatically faster Okay, all the steps are rolled into one process and they get to use a standard meeting service at, you know, anywhere from um, 10 to 20 percent of the cost of going with a full webinar service. And the webinar service, even if you're willing to pony up 150 to 300 dollars per month, does not integrate with ACT. This is fully integrated with ACT. So you really get the best of both. Okay, plus that additional integration. Let me see. I don't see any questions. So let me just actually pause here. I've covered most of what I wanted to cover. Um, obviously, starting December 5th, the um, the resellers will have the option to buy the Link to Events bundle, which will include Link to Events and Link to Calendar. 
Okay, both of them are team editions. There's not the standard edition available with the Linktivity bundle. And if you sell that to a customer and they say, okay, great, I like this. I want to get maybe two, three more calendars. The calendars are available as well through Act. So you can buy any of the team products bundle it with a team version of calendar and then top up the calendars because like I said, other than quotes and calendar, these are generally considered account-based products. Think of it like AMA, okay? Where you're adding AMA to the account, you don't need AMA for every single user like we used to have with GrowSuite, okay? So you can buy one per account and then share it, um, you know, based on, on one person doing the creating, the other person uh, being assigned ownership of different forms, events, surveys, and so on and so forth. Okay, so if you go to order it, um, you'll and it, it's, remember it's only available for these discounts, which are 25% off, only available for Act Premium Cloud customers. The big selling point is not only does this create a stickier experience with Act, and it allows people to see that you know the act premium cloud is where the cool kids are okay and where all the the investments is it will make the experience much stickier and more enjoyable and if people have features like this they're not going anywhere okay um i am going to give one more call out for questions and then if not we'll wrap it up and let you guys get back to your day so let's just see i don't see any questions here Okay, so I think we're good. Thank you very much for joining us, guys. Uh, we will um, distribute the recording of this. Um, if I don't speak to you, to any of you before the end of the day, I hope you have a very good weekend, and thanks for attending. Take care.